time for the bell. How many options will you sell? Fire up your platform, get ready to enter. But first, let's get the mindset centered. Hey, hey, let's go. Uh, we're not here to gamble, we're here to trade. We follow the plan, that's how we get paid. Testing, trading, have success. Find what works for you and forget the rest. Stats and probabilities is what we're about. Time to dismiss greed and doubt. Focus on the process, not the money. And the profits will flow like honey. Power our live, let's start the show. Come on, trade hackers, get ready to go. Zero day options, time to make bank. Get locked and loaded, then be ready to plank. Hey! Hey everyone, welcome to Power Hour Live, Friday, May 3rd. Hope everybody's doing well. S&P up 67, NASDAQ up 366, Russell up 18, Dow up 477, gold and silver a little bit red, notes and bonds a little bit green, 10-year yield down 1.5%, oil down 1%, natural gas up 6%, grains all green, euro and the pound a little bit green, Bitcoin up 4 plus percent. VIX got crushed after the report this morning, down 6.4%, 13.74. So for me today, I took my NDX trade, and that one is... Rick got disqualified because of low VIX. Uh, my NDX trade is still hanging in there. It's in the upper end of the range. Uh, I just I just took my one DTE quad forty, and I just took a Wuga, and those are uh, my Wuga's in my other account. Um, I did just take a discretionary Rickish type trade. Just in case we make a move. I mean, even if we make a move up 10 points, that would that would benefit. So just added that in. I've got I took a 20, 40, 60 percent out of a price action trade. And, and then I took another 20 percent out of this one. And then I did something I don't normally do on these, but I was just it's something I do on my longer term trades. And I I was just kind of playing around, but I I rolled my puts up. My puts got down to about 45 cents. Price is up here in the upper range. So I just rolled my puts up and price has continued to kind of grind higher. So uh, if, we, if I get a little pullback, I'll, I'll shed some more of this. But uh, that is it for me today. Pretty slow day with the big vol contraction overnight. Chad, I assume TLC is going okay today. Chadwick, come in, Chadwick. Yeah, I uh, put one on at nine fifty-five Central and one on at eleven thirty Central, and both have booked twenty forty sixty. Got one contract on for, with each, uh, holding for eighty percent and out for both those, and so that. Uh, I decided to do the Wuga instead of uh, add a power hour trade. I think oh, just boy. less risk. Hey, man, I just I could feel it today. I'm <laughs> sitting dead center right now. Mine is. So, you know, you I just want to be where like, Chad's in the Wuga. <laughs> let's just book these two, you know, that minimum 60% profit iron condors. And, you know, I only did four contracts on the Wuga, so it's minus 1,900 is the max loss. So I just felt like that was better than trying to put on a power hour at this point with thin premiums. I, you know, I've done that before and gotten stopped, and it's a $3,000 loss. And so did not want to evaporate all my profits from – all day so 
So that's Thanks, all man. I got. It's a wooga. I like it. Landon coming in with a power hour, 20% already. He, he, he must have seriously did cancel his wooga. I've got a lot of double calendars to put on throughout the end of the day here. So, oh, I just got rid of uh, two more contracts on my price action trade. So I've got one left. Down day. We are up from the open. Oh, yeah, I've got my rut from yesterday. And it is right on the break even, kind of like it was yesterday. Yesterday, I got a little bump and Made about 400 bucks in the same situation now. So let's hope it doesn't drop into the valley. I do have an iron condor on in my other account that right now it's 5140 is the short strike to the upside end. So if it stays below 5140, it would be max profit. It has to stay between 51.10 and 51.40. I do not close that just because it's profitable, Mr. Avenger. It's not how I roll. I've got my, so I did my, that Apple uh, butterfly for earnings yesterday. Um, it was, so I didn't break the upper wing and it blew through. Th so the expected move would have been a, right around 180, which is where I put my middle strike. Well, it blew through that. So I, you know, kind of a strategy that I talk about in the earnings course is post earnings, short put verticals. If it opens oh, yeah. up above the expected move, then a lot of times it'll stay steady to higher. So I went ahead and sold a vertical. Added, added it to my butterfly to give me no upside risk. So now, worst case scenario, I'll book 62 bucks. If we do come down by chance, then still have a chance to book more. But Apple is uh, kind of opened, came down a little bit, and then is pushed back up. My square... Look at Square. Square gapped up. It, now it was not above the expected move, so I didn't do any adjustments. But look at look at it came all the way back down to lower than where it closed yesterday. So that'll be a loser. I played that bearish. It was up like thirteen percent, or maybe I'm thinking of something else. But is up at least seven. Yeah, that's and a half crazy percent. that it came down after it. I I know it popped yesterday after earnings yeah after the market closed oh yeah it's it touched like almost 78 and now it's down to 70 so let's see i'll set up my wooga on a on toss so i can look at it i did it in my trader account so let's see i did the 35 45s and 3020s. Yep, same here. And I got in at 515. Same here. Currently at 477.
VIX down to 13.69. Trying to hit lows of day. I had a little shake up this morning, but never got about, let's see, about nine points away from the downside of the expected move and made it to about, what is that, 13, 14 points away from the upside? Pretty tight range. Can't believe Mr. Vix is already back down below 14. Look at that collapse. Didn't take long. Did not take long. <laughs> so much hope up here. So much hope. I mean, if it gives me if it gives us price action like it like you know it did in December, January, I'm all for it. especially January. All right, so I need to get ready for my calendars. So I'll start off with the 475767. Yeah, nice little move down back into my uh back towards center on this one. Yeah, my iron condor and my other account that I said had to stay between fifty one ten and fifty one forty is looking really good. That's a six thousand dollar max profit. With this down move. <clears throat> Yep, I got that this morning too, Elliot. <clears throat> I had just immediately closed it and reopened it. So you can see here, it, on the uh, put side, it tried to take the 25s, or it did take the 25s. Yeah, I just ended up, I was in the middle of something else, so I just closed the whole thing and reopened it. So I'm on the 10s and 20s and 20s and 30s. So it, did it do it on your put side or call side? Because if it did five wide on your call side, you're, you're happy about it. Yeah. But the put side or the... Uh, it did it on them. Put side, then you got more risk. Just got filled on 80%. Which one was that? My lunchtime number one, 80% and out.
Yeah, you know what? Trade. I'm going to do that too, Elliot. I uh, I meant to do that. That way it doesn't <clears throat> doesn't fill, and then I can just manually go in. Or it'll maybe I'll put a little bit longer window, and then once it moves off that strike, it'll it'll go ahead and fill. But yeah, the four dollar minimum I think should do it. Let's see here, NDX. Let's see, where is minimum premium at? There we go. back up four. Get my window to 940. All right, cool. Yeah, that should do it. The only transformer I did was actually, I did it yesterday. And it was a uh, unbalanced put condor, but prices obviously moved higher. So I just got this little thing I got to clean up. I'll clean that up at the end of the day with a short butterfly. Speaking of short butterflies, let's see, 35. It's in between strikes, trading for a buck, buck or so. Uh no, Yoga Delic, my I did not my uh my bot did not fire. My VIX filter is at Oh, I've got I've got mine at fourteen and a half. That's why. I've bounced around between fourteen and fifteen. I think I ended up settling on fourteen and a half on my bot. Still use a little more pullback. Hey, Scott, just saw your uh, post in the Zoom chat. Do me a favor. Post in the Zero Live chat channel in Discord.
<laughs> yeah, that's what that's why you're not seeing anybody else post. Welcome. Yes, if you go into into the Discord Zero Live chat channel, that's where we anytime we live stream, that's where we chat. That way it uh you know, when you close Zoom it the chat goes away, but we like to do it in there so that it stays. But to answer your question, um are these trades put on the AM? Yeah, so so for power hour for a day like this, uh, the only power hour I took is the one that I call the Wooga, and it's in my trade plan. And that was put on about five minutes before the live stream started. And that's this one here. And then and you'll see that that back test link in my um in my trade plan. Um so it's what I consider a neutral day. So I don't do uh, any other power hours besides that, unless I do it on a discretionary basis, which you'll notice in, in the trade plan as well. Which is what I do, all discretionary. But Yeah, and, and Chad, you know, if, if you check out Chad's, Chad's trade plan, you'll see how he, how he does it. Um, but yeah, so the, I, so the idea would be first to check out those, uh, Check out the trade plans and it'll make a lot more sense. And the two trades that I, well, one, I just closed out at 80%. I still have one left. Um, it will close if it hits 80%. Those I posted in the Dr. Chad channel. So you could I post those right after I take them throughout the day. One of them, I put on about 10 a.m. Central and one about 1130 Central. And then I usually do power hour trades right now, but I chose to do just the Wooga that Steve was talking about. Yep, exactly. Elliot, I use the, I use the bot dependencies on that. Power hour. I uh, probably would have booked 20, 40%, maybe even. I just didn't want to put on any more risk. I wanted to finish today with a green day going into the weekend. It's been a while since I've had two trades hit 80% out. Uh, Landon, I probably would. I'd probably go for 60%, honestly, instead of adding a new one. Oh, you mean take it off or reduce stock? Okay. Um. Good question. I think if I had a green day, nice green day going, I probably would just follow the rule on it. Although, you know, price looks like it's not moving much, but we know how quickly that can change. That is, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. <laughs> Yeah, I probably would just book the profits and keep your nice green day. Because I know from experience that if you would have hit that 40 and you're going for 60 and you just reduce the stop and then it goes against you and now you're back to maybe only booking 20%, you would have been like upset about it. Like, at least that's how I am when that happens to me. Now, if you had really wide strikes, you know, if I had like a 40 point range for it, then I would. But if my range was like 10 points, I, then I would say no. Yeah, for me, for me, I do that mostly on my AM iron condors because they're so wide. Like the one I have right now is like, um, what did I say that was? 
that one is 30 wide. And so price hasn't moved in a 30 point range much today at all. So I've never done that for power hour. <clears throat> There you go. Would I enter a new power hour? Let me look at the strikes. And it almost have to be a straddle. I mean, I've certainly done it before. If I didn't have anything on, probably. But if I had anything on, I wouldn't add any more risk. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's just if you got a, if I had a really nice green day going, I, I wouldn't probably put, add a new one. My Woog is at four ten, four dollars and ten cents. Steve's firing off calendars. Yep, trying to get filled on my six seven. Got a partial fill. There we go. All right, so just posted my four, seven, five, seven, and six, seven for now. Yep, Wooga, nice and centered. Oh, yeah. If it's centered like that, Steve, do you always take it off at 50%? I do, yeah. Yeah. Just follow the rules. Just trying to get my calendars in a group here. All right. You found it, Scott B. What's your What's your experience, Scott? How much have you traded before? You're brand new, got some experience. Zero DTE, non zero DTE. Paper trade, paper trade, Scott B. All these strategies you're hearing with Wooga, zero DTE. You should paper trade them for an extended period of time first. Yeah, you're gonna be you're gonna be you're gonna feel overwhelmed with everything going on because people trade different things and there's a lot of content that we've built up over the years. So just you know, pick pick one or two and and really just kind of dial in and practice and <laughs> lucky you moral <laughs> do do the do the trading options for income option basics course do the iron condor course do the directional course 
and that'll give you a pretty solid foundation. And then I do the zero DTE course. And if, and if you see me making fun of Krish for asking a question, don't think that I'm going to do that to you. That's only Krish. <laughs> oh, I'm so close to 80% and out on my second iron condor. 20 cents. Should just let that. Now, no, it's it's towards. It's pretty close to the short strike. I better just let's say I can let that cook. It's only one hundred and thirty-five more bucks, though. And uh, Scott Scott B, just to give you an idea about the zero DTE. Um. I've been trading since 2016, 17, right in there. So it's about seven years. And I paper traded that zero DTE for two and a half months. So very, very recently. Yeah, it was like uh, October through December. So, you know, I, I'd been trading seven years and still, still traded it, paper traded for 10 weeks. The people that I see fail with the zero DTE are people that don't paper trade it long enough. The ones that are successful, they, they, and you know, there's a lot of them in the channel. Or they just lose a bunch of money before they become successful. Yeah, that too. <laughs> Cause you can do that. And really every good trader, I think probably needs to go through a drawback or does. Maybe they don't need to, but at some point they do. That's right, Lando. Chad's version of a drawdown is is plus forty nine thousand on the month, though. <laughs> I'm probably the most competitive person you'll ever meet. So, when the market wins. Even if I'm a green for the day, but they beat me on a couple trades, I'm, I'm grumpy. Ooh, Apple. And being competitive in trading can be good and bad. Yeah. Not going to beat the market. It can, you, better play, you better play nice yeah. with the market. Yeah. I mean, it can be, it can be bad. Yeah, paper trading is not about the fills. It's about working out all the nuances of, of the strategy. Right. So let's see, got into Wooga at 515, so about 260 would be my PT. Yeah, I got mine set at 255. Trading at 35. All right, then I'm going to send mine at 250, so I beat you by nickel. <laughs> Hope you don't get stopped. <laughs> I guess there is no stop on it. That's happened to me before, man. I people were booking profits, and I, you know, I put the trade on just a touch later. Didn't get filled, and then it went to max loss.
35 minutes to go at the money butterflies trading for dollar 25 ish could could have a nice day for Mahomes. we could have a nice day let's see Yeah, I noticed that. So for next week, Monday, we've got a couple of FOMC members speaking at 11.50 and noon Central. Tuesday, nothing. Wednesday, we've got a 10-year bond auction that has medium impact at noon. FOMC member Cook at 12.30. Thursday, pre-market unemployment claims. And a 30 year bond auction at noon. And then Friday, University of Michigan consumer sentiment 30 minutes after the bell. So very light. I noticed that. I looked at that last night. Let's hope that means price movement like today. I plan on scaling up in size. week yeah kelvin that's how i that's how i teach it in the in the class um madam butterfly noticed that she was getting better fills when you are selling the verticals so i've been doing that lately so usually what i've been doing is I'll get filled on the butterfly. And then instead of buying $1 verticals, I will sell $4 verticals on the opposite side. You know, so selling a, selling a $4 put spread is the same as buying a $1 call spread. And vice versa. Landon booking power hour one, 40% and out. Kelvin, 40%. Michael Todd, 20%. I'm looking forward. Madam Butterfly, 60% now. I'm looking forward to seeing the profit loss from today. Looking forward to seeing the PL from everybody. Yeah, I'll do it, Kelvin. I'll have I'll have strikes available and available and toss. So I'll just do it. I'll do it here. I'll close out of my other stuff before then. All right. So I got to do a couple more calendars here. <clears throat> Next on my list is three, six. About a dollar, a dollar away from hitting my Wooga profit target. Le Wooga. Is OG Wooga in the house today? I don't know. He's been pretty tight lipped lately. He has. Wooga, you've been you've been too busy for us lately? What's going on? Man, I was so close. He's too busy for us.
I mean, the expected move, I mean, <clears throat> Steve would know more about that than, than me, Steve C. But does it always hit one of the expected ranges? I mean, I've seen an expected move of 20 and it moves 60 points. That happened this week. Yeah, when we say expected move, that's simply the price range that the options are pricing in. That's the one standard deviation move. So one standard right. deviation is 68.27%. So call it 70%. So about 68 to 70% of the time, it'll stay within that range. It'll expire within that range, I should say. Yeah, the tough days are when it, you know, you have a 20 expected move. It moves down 40 points. Then it moves up 60 points. Still within the expected move. And so if you look at uh, the top, like the, I don't know if you have toss, Steve C, but on the option chain, this plus or minus number on the right hand side, that's the quote unquote expected move or the one standard deviation move. So you can see it. So what we have left on zero DTE you can look at the different option chains and kind of see what the expected move is for those different time periods. Come on, hit me. I'm a nickel away from 80% and out. So I always, on my five minute chart, I just always plot the expected move to start the day. I just put the upper and the lower and sometimes I'll, I'll play directional trades off of that expected range. You know, if like, if it comes down, it looks like it's going to hold, I might go long at the bottom or if it breaks through and then kind of bounces back up to it, I might go short, might go short, you know, just little things like that, or, you know, it's just, it's as good as any other level, but. There it is. 80% and out. Both trades today, both iron condors. Beautiful. Try to squeeze some more out of this one. All right, so posted my three six. Somebody was asking a question about longs. I think it was maybe Benji yesterday or the day before. I'm not sure, but. Today's a good example of closing my longs right away on my lunchtime number one. Um, I got filled on half. And my puts were worth 45 cents. So <clears throat> I did 10 contracts. And so five contracts times, you know, 45 bucks. It's a fair amount. So I, I went ahead and closed half my puts right then and there when I saw they were 45 cents. Right, so I am out of all TLC trades. We only have the Wooga left. Plus 57.15. 57.15 on two trades today, two TLC.
in the first three days in May. 2-0 and on the AM Iron Condors. 2-1 and on lunchtime. And 0-1 oh and on power hour. Looking like about a dollar sixty credit for the four five. Get filled at a buck sixty. All right, just posted that in the calendar channel. By the way, Scott B or anybody else that's new here, I'm, these calendars are just something that I, I have a lot that I put on on Friday afternoons. They're not zero DTE related, so. But you get the enjoyment of hearing me talk about them anyway. I need 60 cents for the Wooga target. Break my streak. Yeah, Sasha, if you think about it, of course, if if there's a lot of price movement, then those butterflies are going to be cheaper, right? Because it's going to be a lot easier to move out of that, that range. If price is tighter, then their market makers are going to price in less, less movement, so they're going to be more expensive. Uh, yeah, the ones I'm putting on right now, Scott, are are short term like that. They will all come off next week. Yeah, I'm doing a, I'm doing a bunch of the others, so I just I went a little bit smaller this time on the four or five tomorrow. So I've got my four or five. Next up, four six. I can't believe the OG Wooga isn't here. I mean, I'm sitting here potentially going to book a winning Wooga. <laughs> All right. People's Man plus 1990. Almost today. Biggest day ever. Nice. Awesome. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what Lando's is. He said it was his best green day with for TLC trades.
three, five, and then lastly, three, seven, if I have room, let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna skip the three, seven and the four, six. Well, let's see. Yeah. All right, so I'm done. I'm done with my calendar set. I'm good. I'm good with what I got. All right, so I've still got one contract left on my little price action trade. At the Wooga. Pretty well centered. I need 40. 40 How cents, are you? 40 cents. Okay. Yeah, I'm not doing a four six or a three seven, Chris. Just don't have good strikes available. Get it, Dick K. Feels like it should be a decent week. I mean, I mean, how much lower can the VIX really go? Famous last words. Could be 12 when we open up Monday. Thirteen oh five on TLC today. Nice. Landed. Two contracts apiece. Twenty forty out. Nice. Did you add on a when one got off centered? That's the question. Okay, there you go. That's what I'm talking about. See, that's you. you I actually want my first one to get off center at some point. But it, it allows you to put on another, and then you're making money no matter which way it goes. That's how, what I did today. And today I skewed mine a little bit to the um, downside so because it was trending up, and that just worked beautifully for my lunchtime number one, my second one. Because if it moved down, it was going to help my first one. If it moved up, it helps my second one. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes it's hard to follow rules. I heard, I heard Steve was a big, he broke a lot of rules in high school. I've heard from a lot of his buddies. I've never been very good at following rules. <laughs> I had to really retrain myself to, for trading. <laughs> See, is NDX gonna finish in range here? So far, so good. Apple's coming back down to range a little bit. If I didn't do my adjustment, I'd still be down a little bit. With my vertical, I'm up a couple hundred. Got seven minutes to hit that Wooga profit target.
five minutes till the MOC number. The 30 butterfly. It's trading for a dollar seventy. Want to hear something really cool? I like cool stuff. I just closed an iron condor out in my other account. I sold it for five dollars and forty five cents, ten contracts, and just just bought it back for fifteen cents. Beautiful. <laughs> There's Wooga. Wooga's in the house. We were looking for you earlier. Where you been? He's just he's just laying back in the shadows. He's, he's not even on the strike. live stream, I don't think. He's just popping in to let everybody know the Wooga's about to hit. Just giving himself a little self promotion. <laughs> you have a real business? I'm at 280. I need 255. It's got six minutes. Uh, I do sometimes. I haven't in a while. Dark Avenger. It's actually something I could probably listen to as I'm sitting here trading throughout the day. I'm always, sometimes I listen to sports radio. Sometimes I watch crime documentaries. Sometimes I do push-ups. Not very often, though. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this last contract to make room for my homes. Oh, it hit anyway. Nice. Yeah, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. <clears throat> Actually, I hunted on, on Steve's place today. Man, I cannot. Get, there was like three different gobblers. I could not get them across the creek. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I meant to ask you. I assumed you didn't get one. Yeah, there, there was one roosted right behind me. They're, they're close. I mean, they were now with all the leaves on the trees, they're hard to see. I'm actually leaving here in about 10 minutes. Well, right when I get done here, I'm. Picking up stone, and we're going to do one more, one more trip to Nebraska, hunt tomorrow, and then we got to be back by four o'clock for his baseball game, and then turkey season will be over. Putting in an order on the fifty-one thirty butterfly at two bucks. MOC number in a minute. It's trading for about a dollar eighty, maybe. Needs to get back up a little bit closer to fifty one thirty. Come on, you go bounce in up. at twenty five as well. That's not, that's not the direction I wanted the Wooga to go. Mm. All right, listening for MOC here in a few seconds. Eight hundred million sell side, very small. Well, it doesn't look like I'm going to hit profit target in Wooga again. It's 
So price is right between strikes. So we need to move towards 25 or towards 30 for one of our Mahomes flies to get filled. Build on the thirties. Build on the Wooga. And I close that the Wooga at two sixty five. Two fifty five. Oh yeah. Boom. Okay. okay, so I got filled on the thirty butterfly. So now, if price moves up, I can either sell a call spread or buy a put spread. You buy a put spread for a buck or sell a call spread for four dollars. It's the same thing. But we're typically getting filled on the credit spreads a little bit quicker. So if we go up, you want to be you want to do the upper strike. So I would just sell a vertical here. On the 30s and 35s. Put that in for four bucks. Or if you want to just do the fly on one side and just do the verticals on the put side, you can you can do a, a sell for four bucks and a buy for a buck. So so that that's a little you know, it depends on how it works in your head. It's it's all the same thing, but you've got to make it make sense. So I'm just gonna sell both verticals here to give you guys an example you know i taught buying a dollar vertical in the class <clears throat> I'm, I'm just gonna i'm gonna show you the selling of the vertical so if it goes up i want to sell a call spread i'm going to put this in for four bucks if it goes down i will sell a put spread also for four bucks So now I've got both of those verticals working. It's still sitting at 30, so neither of them are close to four bucks yet. So you got you got plenty of time to, well, usually, unless things start moving quickly, which after a big MOC number, they certainly will sometimes. Oh, Michael Todd coming in. Five grand today. Beautiful. Yeah, Kelvin, you can do you can do any of them on any side. You could do them all on the call side. You could do them all on the put side. You know, I think what what Madam Butterfly does is she'll get filled on one of the whatever side she gets filled on on the butterfly. So if she gets filled on the call side butterfly, then she'll set up her verticals on the put side, and it just keeps it cleaner, or you know, keeps it more separate. Um, either way, you do it. it, it any of those work. So while it, while we're waiting, if you just, you know, the easiest way to do it is look at the, look at the risk graph. You know, so here's the, here's the butterfly I got filled on. Here are the two verticals that I have working. So if I get filled on the on the call vertical, it'll look like that. If I get filled at four bucks, I'll lock in a thousand dollar profit with the potential of more if it drops. On the uh, put side, if I get filled on that. Same thing. I'll lock in a thousand dollar profit and I'll make more if it goes up. But we've got to get a move around five dollars away from from the strike.
That was my quad 40 that just got filled. Ooh, 11 percent on that quad 40. That's a big profit on that one. All right, guys. Well, I'm, I don't have anything else on to finish the day, so I'm going to get on the road. All righty, Chadwick. Have a good one. All right, everybody. Have a good weekend. See you next week. Bye. So we've got three and a half minutes. We need a little move away from the 30 strike. So we're moving, we've moved down a little bit away from 30. So you can see, obviously, the puts are getting more expensive, you know, getting closer to that four bucks, whereas the calls are super cheap now because it's moved away from those. Just need a quick little pop lower. I actually need to get out of my Apple. I made a little bit of money on my Apple earnings trade. All right, so now it's trading up towards three bucks. Need a little bit more lower. Another point. Got a minute, one minute. So we're currently in the valley. Not looking good. 45 seconds. We don't want to bounce. Three, two, one, ding. All right, so that's not a, not a good close. Looks like 2774. 27.78. So it's, I'm going to lose about 700, 800 bucks on mine. Never got any movement. 
So even if even if I didn't get filled on a vertical, but it you know pushed a little bit lower, it would have been profitable, but it closed a little bit in the valley. So so yeah, so per contract that would be about yeah about eighty two dollars or so loss per contract. Yep. All right, my friends, have a good weekend. We will be back at it next week. I actually need to update the live stream schedule for uh, for May, so I haven't done that yet, but I'll do that here in the next day or two. Uh, otherwise, have a good weekend. Talk to you soon. Cheers.